Maybe you know you can double click a DaVinci Resolve project file to import it on a Mac, but did you know that if you hold Option and right click to import that you can actually set your gallery stills location automatically with Import Plus? Or maybe you're curious, where are my projects even saved to and what the heck is a database and what if DaVinci Resolve crashes? Will I lose all my hard work? I've got answers to those important questions and more broken into three chapters in today's creative video tips. Super quick, first things first, make sure you go turn on auto saves right now if you haven't already done so because they are not on by default and this is how you do that. To turn your auto saves on in DaVinci Resolve 17 disk databases, you go to preferences and then across to user preferences, project save and load, and then right under save settings, we have live save. Turn live save on, that is gonna save every change you make as you make it. It's a lot like saving in Final Cut Pro. So if the system goes down, it can come right back up right away. Um, project backups is basically incremental saves um, based off of these settings that you, you turn on here. So they're full DaVinci Resolve project files that you can load in in the project manager. So I set mine to every 10 minutes. That's how much I'm comfortable with losing uh, work is 10 minutes worth of work basically for a day and then a week's worth of work. And the important thing is you wanna set your project backup location and set it to a location that's different from where you're storing your disk database. And we'll get into that in the next section here, but I set mine to Creative Cloud file so it's automatically uploading to the cloud. I don't have to worry about it, I can get to it from anywhere. But it could also go to an external hard drive and that would work great as well. Let's click OK and then save. And then how do you load those in? So those are saving, right, every 10 minutes. But you use the project manager, which is a little house down here in the lower right, or you can hit Shift 1 to get there. And you load them in by right clicking on the project and then you go down to project backups. And then you see all your projects right there. So these are all time stamped. You choose the one you want to load from you know, just click it right there, say load, and then it's gonna wanna create a new project file based off of a copy of that. Uh, just give it a second, it's gonna create that for you. And then you can go back to your project manager, click on it and get going right from where you left off. Now that we have live save and project backups turned on, we don't have all our eggs in one basket. And trust me, this is gonna save your bacon big time one day so you don't lose those perfect edits and color grades. Now the first time you create a new project in DaVinci Resolve, it creates a database for you. And the way you find it is by clicking this little home button, the project manager, and clicking this guy right here. And you can click uh, this info button. It's gonna give you a little bit more information, but what I suggest is you right click and you say reveal in finder. That takes you right to where it's located. I keep mine in my documents folder. It's probably buried in your library somewhere um, in, in application support if you haven't changed the default of it. But if you just go down the trail here, it's inside users and inside guest. Um, for legacy purposes is why it's in the guest folder. Um, there used to be like, you know, multiple users on a single station and they don't do that anymore, but th they're in the guest folder. But um, within here, we have all of these uh, folders and the project name is always project.db. And the reason I wanna show you this is because you do not wanna be renaming anything or changing inside the finder level with DaVinci Resolve. You wanna do it within the project manager. So let's say we wanted to rename something you right click on it instead and you say rename and we can just call this V2 and you can see it updates itself in the finder. So just leave finder alone, do it all within the project manager and you should be good to go. Now, what if we wanna organize everything that's in here? Well, that's where folders come in. So we can create a new folder really easily by um, just you know clicking new folder, give it a name and then the way you get projects in it is you just click and drag until you get that little plus and it's gonna dump it in there for you. You can even do folders inside folders, do the whole inception thing. Um, but now that we're stuck in here, how do I get back out to that root level? I can't click here, that doesn't do anything. You actually click this breadcrumb trail and that gets us back out. But what if I wanna get the project back out of that folder? This is a little trick uh, that a lot of people don't know about. So if you're inside of there, you can't just click and drag, it doesn't come right out. What you need to do is cut and paste. You right click and you say cut, okay? And it looks like it didn't do anything, Chadwick. You're like, you're, you're nuts, it, it did. So let's go back over to projects and then we can right click and say paste. And just like that, it has come right back out of that folder. The folder's empty, it's on the root level of that database. So that's how you move the projects out and around. Another really useful organizational thing that's in the databases over here is if you click the list view and then go over to columns, there's a section for notes. And the way you add notes is real simple. Inside the project, when you're working in it, you go down to project notes and you type something that might be useful to someone like, um, that, you know, and then once you do that, you just hit the X, it automatically saves it. You can go back to project manager with shift one or it's that little house, a house icon and it shows up right there with, alongside all the rest of your projects. So that's super useful. 
Um, let's click thumbnail right back over here so we can see nice little pictures again. And one of the complaints I get a lot with the Resolve is I can't have two projects open at the same time. Well, you kind of can. And the way you do that is you right click and you say dynamic project switching. Turn that sucker on and now I can open up another project and kind of have them both loaded into RAM at the same time. So if I double click this one, this Fruit of the Loom one, um, I can switch between the two really quickly. I can copy and paste between the two really quickly. So one way you can do that is up here at the top, you just click that drop down. you can go to the other project, or you could go to File, Switch Project, Fruit of the Loom, I'm over there, really simple. And the way we can double check to make sure what's loaded into RAM is this little house icon, the Project Manager, we both have. Uh, check marks here for this one and this one. So they're both essentially open at the same time. That's dynamic project switching. What if I have a new client or I just need to make a new database because I've got two main projects in one, but I want to take a project from one database and put it in the other. Let me show you how to do that. First, we're going to create a new database by clicking new database. We'll call this demo and we have to put it in a new empty folder. So we'll click browse to find the location where we want to be putting it. I'm going to put it on my internal hard drive because that's what's fastest and we'll create a new folder inside there that's empty. We'll call it demo. I like to make sure my, my folders match my database names. It's not necessary, but I do that. Click open and create, and da 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 da. Just like that, we have a new empty database. I'm gonna get rid of this info thing so we have a little bit more space to work with and see, but if I wanna get a new project in there, it's really simple. All you're gonna do is go to the database that has the project you wanna copy over. You select it, you hit Command C on the keyboard, you go to the other database, and I think you know where I'm going with this. I hit Command V, and boom, just like that, that uh, project, a copy of it, is placed in the other database. Now you can even copy and paste between different types of databases. So we've been in the disk database, but I also have a Postgres SQL database for shared projects over here. So if I click on that, I could take this project here, hit Command C, go back to our demo one that we had just created, hit Command V, and in just a second, that project is pasted over there. So it, it works both ways. And by the way, if you want to know more about shared projects with DaVinci Resolve, like you can have multiple editors in the same projects or colorists working at the same time on the same timeline, basically. Uh, if you want to know more about that, leave a comment down below so I know how much interest there is in that. That's something I do at my office and it's a super cool workflow. So I'd love to share that if it's useful. If it's not, I don't want to waste my time doing it. I'll get something that you need to know. Okay, so let's say we are done with this database. We want to delete it, we want to get rid of it. The way you do that is you actually disconnect it. You disconnect it by right-clicking on the database saying disconnect, and yes, we're gonna disconnect it. I know what I'm doing here. It's gone from Resolve, but it's not gone from your computer. You need to actually do that from the finder. So you'd go back over to where you know you have it located. We called it demo. I would just put this in the trash. It's as simple as that. So let's say, we, pretend we had deleted that, um, but what if we wanted to bring it back? What if we had just misplaced it or it's coming from another system or something? You can actually link uh, and sort of reconnect to it. So the way we do that is there's a button right here. That's what this two-way error thing is, connect databases. You click that, and this would actually give you an opportunity to rename the uh, the database. What if we want to call this one database, uh, uh, you know, demo two instead of demo? And then you just point to where it's located, which is of course this demo folder, and then say connect. Give it a second, and boom, it's it's back up, ready to rock and roll. Another thing Resolve makes it super easy is to back up your database. If you just click this button right here, when you have your database selected, you want to back up. You click back up. We will put it on the desktop because that's kind of what you do in tutorials, right? You click save, we say backup, and uh, it's going to take a few minutes for sure. And boom, it's done. So if we go into a new machine, we're going to update our software. This is something you probably want to do before that. And then the way you bring it back is the button right next to it. So it's called restore. You hit restore. You choose that disk uh, DB file. You say open. And again, we have an option here to give it a new name because we're making a new database from that. It's kind of like when we were doing the auto saves and doing a new project. So we'll call this one uh, CVT, I don't know, two or something like that. We'll tell it where we want it to go. And again, we create a new empty folder, call it CVT2, hit create, hit open, hit create. And it's gonna say it's gonna take some time. It's not gonna take that long. We'll just hit restore, boom, it's, it's already done. How fast was that? So we have CVT 
two right here. So that's basically how you back up and restore databases here in DaVinci Resolve 17. Databases are great things. They help resolve access to information that it needs much faster. And that's why if you've ever heard of Avid having good media management, it's because Avid uses a database to keep track of all the footage. Resolve is basically doing the same thing except with projects. And the databases can also save you time because you're never guessing, where did I store that one specific project file at? Now, no footage actually lives inside the database. Instead, it stores the projects, and then the projects store all the metadata about your timelines, your clips, your bins. And Creative Video Tips, which is the channel you're watching right now, stores all kinds of great tutorials and tricks to help you create videos that make a difference and stand out. I'm Chadwick, and if you've learned anything new today, I'd love for you to consider subscribing right now so you don't miss out on more great tips. And it's totally free. Next up, I want to show you how to move projects between editing systems. If you work from multiple machines like I do, you're going to be exporting projects a lot. So to do that, you go to File, Export Project. And I like to just give them a date or increment them with a new number, we'll call it V2. And this has just created a self-contained uh, you know, project file that you can then email, you could load on a hard drive. It's really easy and portable and it's, it's actually very small. If I do command I, it's, you know, this one's two megabytes. Um, but the thing that's really important to understand is that this is an exported project. It's just like a way to transfer the material. So if when we open this up, let's say we double click it to open it and launch it, you are now working on an imported project that is not referring to this at all anymore. It's just like that was the starting point. So you can't like take V2, work on it, and then think you can send this V2 to someone else and it has all the changes. No, the changes are now inside the imported project that would then you would need to export again, which you could do with the same name and you know replace files or whatever the, uh, the file name and write over it, that would be fine. But it's not actually happening to that file. And like I showed at the beginning of the video, one of the coolest ways to import something, if we go back to our project manager with Shift-1, is to option right click because this gives us the import plus uh, import project plus option, which is going to transfer over things like our gallery stills so that it's updated to what's on your current machine and they're not stuck to what's on the other machine. You click open and this, like we see here, this is importing. It's not, it's not actually working from that version. So we've exported project files, backed up databases, but those are only metadata. What if we need to include footage with it? That's where archives come in. If we right click on a project here and we say export project archive, what this is going to let us do, well, it tells us where do we want to save it. Let's put it on our desktop because that's what we do in tutorials. And we're going to turn off render cache. Uh, we have the option of including our original media or our proxy media or just one of the other. So if you needed to send this to someone and it's coming back, you could just do proxy media. It would make it really small. Um, let's say in this instance, I want to do full res media files. I just have that checked. I click OK. And it starts cooking and exporting that for us. Right now it's bundling up all the footage that's used in that project so that someone else can open it on another machine. And we check over here in our finder and we get this nice little folder called the .dra, DaVinci Resolve Archive, and within it, it's got all our media in it and it's got a DRP file to work from. Now, if you wanted to bring that back into another system, that's super simple too. All you need to do is right click and say, restore project archive super simple right and you point to that archive you click open and we're going to call this one you know version three <laughs> smart reframe demo three we'll click ok and it has brought all that stuff in just like that and lastly i want to point out davinci resolve 17 has a new feature called timeline files if you go up to file export timeline, there is a DaVinci Resolve timeline file. So if you're going from DaVinci to DaVinci, this is a great way to do it. It has a lot more compatibility and information than an XML or AF or EDL does. You could just hit uh, save and it just exported this timeline only and you can see they're really small files. So you could easily just message this to someone, put it in email, it's 251 kilobytes. So that's, that's a quick way to just move a timeline from one Resolve system to another. And now that you've mastered DaVinci Resolve databases and projects, that's really just the beginning. Click right up here right now to learn more about DaVinci Resolve. And since there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video.